Hi, this is your host, Abdul Bhartia, and today we have with us once again Nithya Rao, head of Amazon Open Source Program Office. Nithya, it's great to have you back on the show. So good to be with you, uh, Swap, and to talk with you again. We used to speak, uh, meet, and speak a lot before the pandemic happened. So I'm actually glad that now we are uh, kind of reconnecting. I mean, we do connect off camera, but it's great. Uh, you have a long, you know, career in open source, long history in open source, and I would love to take this opportunity to just talk about you. Talk about yourself, you know, about your work in the open source space. Swap, so, thank you so much for that opportunity because you know I love this world and this community. I've been doing open source since 1998. So that's almost 25 years, I think, something like that. Um, and it was at Silicon Graphics that I started working on open source, you know, in the early days of open source when companies were saying, how do we ship products based on open source? How do we work with Linux? What does community mean? And what should we contribute back? What's the business model? All of that good stuff. And the bug of open source bit me. And ever since then, I've been, I, I say I'm a bridge builder. I build bridges between communities and companies. So I went on to work at companies like Tripwire, helping them open source their project uh, to working at Windriver Systems, uh, managing Windriver embedded open source Linux, uh, and then went on to run multiple open source project program offices. Uh, I started the program office at SanDisk, which is a storage company, then went on to Comcast and started the open source program office and built it. Uh, for five years at, at Comcast, and then now at Amazon. This is uh, I'm finishing up my first year uh, shortly, and uh, Amazon's always had an open source office for a very long time. So I get a chance to, you know, take it further and build it uh, further. As you said that you are a bridge builder, and when I look at open source program offices, you folks are actually building a lot of bridges, not internally, uh, because sometimes when you do work with uh, companies, you have to also look at the business instead. They have to align with the, because open source is not charity. Open source is uh, hard and soul of today's economy there. Uh, but if I ask you, how would you define uh, open source program office? Open source program offices came into existence. Uh, some people say back in the day, you know, when Sun and HP used to start working on open source, they would have a strategy office. Uh, Silicon Graphics also had a strategy office. But the term open source program office really came into being uh, in the 2000s, you know, with Google and uh, with Yahoo and uh, Twitter and, and companies like that. So to me, an open source program office is a center of competency and excellence in open source. And they are at the heart of how a company does open source and works with open source communities and foundations. So we really uh, build the bridge from the company to the community, but we also make it easy to do open source inside a company. What is a typical role of open source program office? I mean, big companies, they of course have large team, smaller companies, it's just the CEO and CTO doing everything else. Uh, so does it really depend on the organization or the role remains the same? It definitely depends upon the organization. And today open source program offices exist in the government. Uh, it exists in uh, universities like the University uh, of California, Santa Cruz. RIT have open source offices. Carnegie Mellon has one. Uh, so also uh, Johns Hopkins. And in companies, big and small, it, it varies. Um, it also varies really by the business of the company. An enterprise which is, say, in the media and entertainment space like Comcast, has a very different objective in its open source program office as opposed to a technical company like an Amazon or a Microsoft or uh, you know anyone in the technology space. Um, so what is the role of an open source program office? First and foremost, it is to really be an expert in open source norms, how communities function, how to be a good citizen in open source. It is also to really know what role does open source play in the company's business? 
And hence, how should the company engage with open source? How should they comply with open source? How should they consume open source? So it is a very different pattern for a tech company as opposed to an enterprise, right? At Comcast, uh, one of our objectives from the open source office was how can we establish a technical brand for the company? Because you may not be known as a technical company if you're an enterprise. Uh, and how can we attract good technical people into the company? But from a technology company, it may be more, how can we make sure we are experts at the technology we provide to our customers? How can we make sure we sustain the communities that we depend upon? So the objectives will definitely vary. So you need to understand how open source plays a role in your business. If you look at your career graph, you largely work with large companies. Uh, does that mean that open source program offices are only for large companies or is smaller companies? Because the fact is in today's world, every company is leveraging open source in one capacity or the other. Some companies are very well placed to also contribute. Some are still trying to figure it out. So so talk a bit about, you know, is it only for big companies or smaller companies should also have open source program office or at least open source strategy? Every company should really be thinking about its open source strategy. And exactly as you mentioned, Startups today, the reason they can move fast is cloud, of course, helps them move fast, but also open source uh, consumption helps them move fast. Uh, they don't need to build it, they can use it, and they need to understand how then their relationship should be to open source from a consumption perspective, from a contribution, uh, everything. And clearly, they don't have as many resources, so a little portion of the CTO office should be really worrying about what is our open source strategy? Are we complying with licenses? How are we working with communities we are dependent upon? Um, to be honest, you often startups are acquisition targets for larger companies. And one of the blockers in mergers and acquisitions often is that the startup does not have its open source house in order. And so they really do need to worry about it, at least for that purpose, but also to really manage, uh, you know, the supply chain, if you will, of what they're consuming, right? And then there are startups which are built on open source. Um, so their main business is providing the commercial uh, equivalent of an open source project, right? Uh, as in the old days, Red Hat did for Linux. And in that case, they're even more important to have open source as part of their strategy. So their product management team, their CTO team, everyone really needs to understand the role open source plays, how they will work with the community, how they will position themselves vis-a-vis -vis open source, and how they will serve their customers better working with open source. What the risk organization might run into if they don't have an open source program office or open source uh, strategy, or just look at it from a holistic point of view is that, hey, if you don't have, these are the challenges that you, you might run into. So that's why you should have, and then we can talk about the benefits of having open source program office. All of us as businesses have to manage our risks. And if you're not complying with open source licenses, there's a risk that you will be out of compliance and both create reputational damage as well as litigation you know, across your company or you may not be able to ship your product. And you do need to care about the compliance side of things. But on the flip side, if the project you're dependent upon is not uh, maintained well or is not secure, uh, you do need to understand the quality of the project you're consuming. And you have a responsibility to help that project do it right, right? Uh, you have to have a seat at the table and make sure that that is right. And then from a business model perspective, every startup has to think about how they intend to create their business model. Where are they adding value for their customers? What is it that customers are paying them for? And in an open source based company, it's even more important to kind of clearly, clearly construct a good business model from the beginning uh, and not try to 
uh, change licenses or play with other things uh, and not treat your open source community as a lead funnel, right? They are there to give you feedback and to experience your project, a product. When I was listening to you, it does look like that open source program. Of, I don't want to intimidate anybody, but you folks do do a lot of things. You know, it's a lot of internal engagement is there, a lot of external engagement with the open source communities are there. What are some of the basics or you can say the core functions of a successful open source program office? Some of the most core functions of an open source program office is, first of all, you need to understand how your company is consuming open source and hence how you should comply with open source. So establishing a policy for open source consumption, contribution, release, distribution is one of the most core and fundamental aspects you need to th think about. Uh, it's, it's not a, a can do or may do, it's a must do. So that's a basic function. And then the second function is education of your developers around open source norms, communities, how it functions. If you are engaging upstream, if you are building a community downstream, how you should conduct yourself and what are the objectives of conducting yourself in that way. And being a good citizen is, is a big, big part of our job. I would say, you know, the third part of our job is really uh, reducing all friction in a company to for builders or, or for developers and for business owners so that they do the right thing in open source. Right? Build open source thinking into the process of the company so that you are automatically doing the right thing. And it's not a new muscle you have to develop or a new thing you have to do in order to implement open source uh, correctly. And as you know, they kind of look at these, some of the basic functions, what are some of the challenges that open source program offices run into uh, today? One of the big challenges often, and I may use my cheat sheet to kind of look at some of the challenges, uh, is, you know, we, we now have to start looking at security and how, what is the role of open source program office in security? We're not security experts, but we know how open source functions. So we need to partner with our security team members to make sure that they know how to navigate open source security. And then you have new areas that we need to define policy and define process around, such as generative AI, uh, data, hardware, how, what is the role of open source in those areas and what should our developers do in those areas, right? And it's really helping our business see the value of open source and mitigate the risks, but also take advantage of the opportunities that are there and work with foundations successfully. We often help our team members with thinking through, should you or should you not release this? Should you or should you not host it at an, a foundation? And which foundation should you host it at? And how do you build community correctly? So these continue to be challenges. They're not new, but the area of security, AI, data, machine, you know, hardware is, is something where we are kind of defining new processes, if you will. And as you were talking about, you know, engaging with open source community, whether to contribute or where to contribute, uh, how should open source program often engage with larger open source communities? Because companies, they don't just use one open source project. Today, there are many open source projects and within open source project, there are different communities. So, so what is the right approach to engage with the open source communities? Once you know what your dependencies are and what projects are strategic to you, you really need to make the time and the energy to uh, be a part of that community. Uh, you can be a member, you can be a governing member. If it's a foundation, uh, you can contribute, you can um, help the project, frankly, succeed and community succeed. Um, and really make sure that you are helping sustain 
uh, that community and that project and also respecting the norms of that community, right? Each community has a different culture, has a different way of functioning, and you really need to be a good citizen in that community. So we, at, at Amazon, we are a big part of CNCF. We are a big part of the Apache Foundation. Uh, we are very respectful of what these organizations do and uh, we want to make sure that these organizations are successful. What advice do you have for uh, open source program officers, open source program officers. So once again, they can juggle all these balls within the company and outside uh, with the communities successfully. I think it starts with what I said before. It is understand how your business uh, uses open source and why open source is important to your business. Um, second is understand how to guide your team and your company in being a good open source citizen. And third is deeply understand the pain points your developers and your company has in working with open source and do everything you can to unblock those pain points and make it easy for your company to work and be a good citizen. Can you also talk a bit about what are the resources which are available because there are a lot of organizations out there, a lot of companies also, they do a lot of work to help uh, folks, you know, get started with open source program officers. So talk a bit about what kind of help is available there to folks. Definitely there's a lot of help uh, compared to the early days. There's a tremendous amount of help for the, the uh, open source program office. Um, the Linux Foundation, for example, has a group called the To-Do Group, and the To-Do Group does an excellent job of writing case studies and best practices and hosts a lot of talks and helps build community where we can exchange best practices across open source program offices in the world. And the other um, resource I would say is the OSPO++ group which helps with more university and public sector OSPOs. So they've, they've kind of focused on that. The third I would say is um, there are quite a few good books. Ibrahim Haddad has written some really good books on open source program office. He's the executive director of the AI and PyTorch project at uh, the Linux Foundation. But I'll also plug a book that I contributed to um, the Oxford University Press last year, this year actually, published a book called Open Source Policy, Law, Policy and Practice. And it's been edited by Amanda Brock of Open UK. I've contributed a chapter to that book on OSPOs. And that whole book, if you give me a chance to bring the book uh, to you uh, and show you in the camera, is a fantastic book. And it's, it's like a reference book for anyone in open source, uh, whether it's in the law side or in an open source program office. So I would say there are some excellent resources now uh, to doing it right. So this is the book. Uh, it's called Open Source Law, Policy and Practice. And you can see how big it is. Chapter 19 is the chapter on open source program offices. I'm incredibly proud of the contribution we've done to this book. There were 25 luminaries in the open source world. Everyone from Richard Fontana to Amanda Brock, to Jelaine Lovejoy, to Stephen Wally, uh, just incredible people who have spent so many years of their life working on open source, contributing their expertise and their brain cells, if you will, to helping others. Nitya, thank you so much for taking time out today and, of course, talk about this important topic. And, of course, I would love to have you back on the show. Thank you. Thank you so much, Swap. It was so good to talk about a topic I'm very passionate about. Have a great day.